Okay, sweet. So uh, my name's Anna Cardall. I'm an undergraduate student at Brigham Young University. And today I'll be presenting some Google Earth Engine tools um, that my research group and I have developed um, to help researchers and water quality managers um, better manage the lakes that they're, they're managing and interested in. So I'll start off with some background. So um, I'm one of the dots here on Utah Lake. Um, this is a lake near my university, and it has a pretty, it experiences algal blooms pretty frequently and sometimes harmful algal blooms. And there's a pretty uh, controversial situation happening right now where everyone's wondering if they're getting worse um, or if they're just staying the same, um, what's causing them as well. Um, and HABs are a problem around the world, so we're hoping that the uh, work we've done here will be useful to other researchers and water quality managers. So um, to sort of answer the question of why these algal booms are happening and if things have been changing over time, it involves um, three steps. So first is to take some in situ measurements of chlorophyll A, which is an index for algal biomass, um, and pair it with a satellite observation. And we want to do that because satellite imagery gives us an opportunity to look back um, look back in time and also you know satellites have a good um, revisit period so with Landsat for example we get 40 years of history um, with at least bi-weekly images um, so we're gonna take our in situ data that we have and pair it with a with a satellite image and then we're gonna make a model of chlorophyll A and then take that model apply it to our whole set of satellite images and do whatever analysis we're interested in and this would be totally impossible without Google Earth Engine. Um, just the processing power. I can't do it on my laptop, at least. <laughs> um, and yeah, just the sheer amount of data that this sort of analysis um, is would not be possible without Google Earth Engine. Um, and also, we built um, one notebook, one Google Colab notebook for each of these steps um, in the process. So, you know, pairing, modeling, analyzing. Each of these steps have, has its own notebook, so anyone can go and take their notebook and replicate our work um, for, their, for their own water body. And we're, we're doing notebooks instead of just like a JavaScript interface, because we figure people, well, one, the modeling part especially just requires a bit more tinkering around instead of just you know, pressing a button and getting a result. And we want to give people flexibility um, with their their analysis. So yeah, let's get into the methods. So the first step is to pair um, a satellite observation with in-situ measurements. Um, and a big thanks to Kel <laughs> for helping us with this part of the process. He's been really helpful to us. <laughs> um, so yeah, notebook one. So basically you upload your cleaned CSV file. We're just assuming that your CSV file is clean. And you can select if you want to average your pixels. So if you just want to Get the lat long and take that pixel from the image, or if you want to take a three by three grid of pixels and average them. So that's an option. And then the notebook will pick the closest valid um, Landsat observation within five days of the in situ measurement um, and toss it into a CSV file. And we do all the quality masking, land masking if that's necessary, um, etc. So yeah, it exports the CSV with all your in situ information and all the information from your satellite image and also the hours between the in-situ measurement and the observation. So this is sort of what it looks like. You've got, this is chlorophyll A, for example. So on the very left is your chlorophyll measurement with the Latin long, the date the sample was taken, and then the date of the satellite image, the hours between them. And then on the very right here is your um, band values in your satellite image. So step two is to model chlorophyll A. And so, um, there are plenty of chlorophyll A models available in the literature, but for Utah Lake, for example, you, you know, step into the water and you can't see your feet. It's just very optically complex. So we want to give, um, us at least, we need a unique um, model, and perhaps others will as well. So you take the CSV from the last notebook and upload it into notebook two, and you specify a time window, the bands that you want to be included in your model, as well as any band combinations like red over blue or red times blue or the log of blue. Um, so you can check those boxes. 
And then you also specify an alpha value for um, lasso. So what this notebook is doing is fitting a multilinear regression model to your data, which is regularized by lasso. And the reason we need to, you can have up to 90 features, depending on how many band combinations you pick. And, but often, we, for example, only have 90 in situ measurements. So we really need to take the number of terms down in this linear model. Um, so that's what Lasso is doing. Um, and this notebook is still sort of a work in progress. We're still exploring Lasso as a good method of making models. Um, and we're also looking to implement some capable validation in this, in this notebook. Um, but yeah, this is the sort of output you get. So it gives you some information about what band fit you picked and what band modifications you picked. And then the actual linear model is included, which you can plug into our next notebook, notebook three, um, which is for all the analysis, which is my favorite part, at least. So instead of doing a bulleted list, I thought it'd be fun to show some maps. So this is just a, a day, an observation of, of Utah Lake. So we've got some, some clouds. And the first thing that we're gonna do is just draw a polygon around Utah Lake. And I, I went a little bit extra with this polygon, but you can just draw a rectangle <laughs> in this one too. So you draw a polygon around the lake, and then the notebook cuts out this polygon from every single image that we have of the lake. Then it goes in and uses um, just the cloud bits um, from the board and finds the good pixels. Um, and cuts out the bad pixels, so we do that for every image. And then we use some um, adaptive thresholding to distinguish between um, water and land. So the red is land and the blue is water here. Do that for every image. And then you're ready to calculate um, chlorophyll A. So in the notebook, you can pick from a list of chlorophyll A models from the literature or take the one that you got from notebook two and input it into, into the notebook to you know, customize it, I guess. Um, yeah, and then it, the notebook applies the model to each pixel in the image to give you chlorophyll A in micrograms per liter. So yeah, that's an example image of a day on Utah Lake. So yeah, some results. So yeah, I guess here on the right is probably the more interesting thing, and this is sort of an old gift, but yeah, we have over a thousand images of Utah Lake over the past 40 years. Um, so super fun, totally not possible without Google Earth Engine. Um, and we, this, these are some maps from a paper that we published, um, this paper actually on the right. Um, so on the left here is the median, um, long-term median of chlorophyll in the lake. And so obviously these two bays, you know, one on the bottom and the one on the right, are higher on average than the lake as a whole. And then in the middle is the sun slope. So that's like increasing or decreasing trends. And so really nothing is, is changing for the majority of the lake. But in the bays, you get some slight increase, but it's a, it's a pretty small slope. Um, and then on the right here is the significance of those trends. So yeah, we, we published um, our analysis of Utah Lake um, earlier this year. Um, and really, this is sort of a shocking graph to maybe some of the people in our area that the lake as a whole hasn't been changing much. Um, that bay that was on the right there does definitely has um, higher chlorophyll concentrations and has a slight increase in trend, but the lake as a whole is, is doing okay, um, which is good news. So, yeah, we hope that, and this is just, we ran, you know, we outlined some other lakes and applied them all to them. Um, so here's just some example images of a day on a few other lakes around the world. Um, so yeah, we hope this will be useful. It was useful to us for our studies and our interests, but we hope that these tools will be useful to other researchers and water quality managers um, as they try and do sort of similar things and answer similar questions.